Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to take a look at the first quarter approval ratings for U.S. senators and state governors. And this is for Morning Consult. And I try to take a look at this every three months. And it is just one poll. It might not be your favorite pollster. But they take a look at everything comprehensively, so it's easy to do a video on it. So first, let's start on the Senate side. The headline is John Tester's Montana coalition shifts from his last Senate campaign. Since 2018, Tester's standing has improved with independent voters in Montana, but weakened with the state's Republicans. So this party is focused on Tester. He's a Democrat in a red state up for re-election. So let's go down to the graph and see where Tester stands. Right now with all voters, he's at a 52% approval rating, only 36% disapproved, 12% don't know. So Tester is coming out with a net 16% positive approval rating. Going into an election year, that's got to feel pretty good. Now that is down just a little bit from six years ago when Tester was at a 56-33% rating. Now with Democrats in Montana, he's at an 88% rating, only a tiny amount view him negatively. With independent voters, he's up. He's at 58% approve, only 27 disapprove. But with Republican voters, and there are a lot in that state, he's way underwater, only 22% approve, 65 disapprove. I think this is highly indicative of election season approaching. Tester is going to be tough to beat, so both sides are realizing what's at stake. Democrats do not want to lose this seat in a red state. Republicans, of course, looking for a theoretical easy pickup, but it's going to be no easy feat going up against Tester. We've seen a lot of polls that show he is popular. Now it's a presidential year and it's going to be a red state, so Tester is vulnerable, but he's going to rely on independence and enough crossover support to keep him in office. Now down here, they cover the other vulnerable Democrats up for re-election this year. And we've also got three years of polling history, but they also put a lighter blue line on here and that indicates Biden's support in the state. And in every one of these, Biden is running considerably behind. So we've already covered Tester in Nevada. We've got Jackie Rosen. She's got a net positive approval rating. How about Sherrod Brown in Ohio? His is also positive, and it's ticked up a little bit, and he's running way ahead of Joe Biden, similar to Tester in Montana. Bob Casey in Pennsylvania, he's also clearly above water. And Tammy Baldwin in Wisconsin, she's the least popular of these five, but she's also just barely in the green. So we've got a 45% gap between Tester and Biden in Montana, and a similar 41-point gap between Brown and Biden in Ohio. It's tough to think that those senators can compete with a 40-point gap in approval rating between themselves and Biden. I think if these were open seats, it would be very likely they would flip. However, these are multi-term incumbents. Even if Biden is unpopular, there's no guarantees that the Republicans are going to be able to flip these seats. Now let's look at the top 10 most popular U.S. senators. All the way at the top, yet again, we've got John Barrasso in Wyoming. You don't really hear much about Barrasso, but he's rocking a 74% approval rating. Only 18 disapprove. Now we've got Brian Schatz in Hawaii, Cynthia Loomis, the other senator from Wyoming, and then Bernie Sanders and Peter Welch, both from from Vermont. Those are the top five. You can look at the rest of the top 10 if you'd like. What about on the bottom? Who are the least popular U.S. senators? Well, it's kind of the same as it was last time. All the way at the top is Mitch McConnell. He's at 28 positive, a massive 65 negative. Now we've got the scandal-plagued Bob Menendez in New Jersey. He's 24 positive, 58 negative. Then rounding out the top five are Collins in Maine, Johnson in Wisconsin, and Cinema in Arizona. So even some of the least popular senators here, like Tandy Baldwin in Wisconsin, they're still at a net positive rate. And the next paragraph says Baldwin is among America's most unpopular senators as she ramps up her re-election bid. 42% disapprove of her performance. And that makes her as unpopular with voters in Wisconsin as Ted Cruz is in Texas. Though Cruz has a higher approval rating, 48 to Baldwin's 44. So that's what it looks like in the Senate. All the red state Democrats look like they're about as popular as they can be. So they're going to go into this with high hopes, hoping that approval rating can carry them over the top. All while Republicans can hope that Biden's approval rating drags them down. So let's move on to the governors. Here the headline is Sarah Huckabee Sanders loses her shine in Arkansas. And the Arkansas Republican has seen the largest decline in net approval among governors newly elected in 2022. So for this list, they spent some extra time focusing on Sanders in Arkansas. So let's get down here a little bit into the details. And here's where she's at with all voters. She has a 56% approval rating, 35 disapprove. Her approval has ticked down five points over the past year and her disapproval is up eight. Now, you might be saying to yourself, this is still a net 21% positive rating. And I agree, it does seem pretty good for Sanders, all things considered. The only reason it's a little bit of a concern is that she's the one who sank the most over the past year. With Democrats, it looks like her approval rating has actually ticked up slightly to 30% with 65% disapproving. Independence here, the trend is a little bit more negative. She's underwater, 43 to 41. Republicans, she has a stellar 81% approval. That is down from the previous at 87. And her 
her disapproval there is at 12. So that all comes out to a net 14% decline over the previous year. Is it a concern? Maybe a little, but ultimately not really. She's not up for re-election for a couple of years, and it's still such a red state, and her approval rating here is still overwhelmingly positive. So we'll see what her trends are like in the future. But here's how she compares to other first-term governors that were elected in 2022. Josh Green in Hawaii, his approval rating is similar. His disapproval has ticked up a little bit. Wes Moore in Maryland, his approval rating is up 5. His disapproval is also up 8. Maura Healy in Massachusetts, she's up 4 on the approval and also up 7 on the disapproval. How about Joe Lombardo in Nevada? His approval has gone up 7 and his disapproval has gone up 4. Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania, his approval has gone up three and his disapproval has gone up four. We could skip Sanders and go down to Katie Hobbs in Arizona. Both her positives and her negatives have gone up three. Jim Pillen in Nebraska, his approval rating is basically flat, but his disapproval has gone up a significant nine points. And finally, Tina Kotek in Oregon, her approval rating has gone up from 42 to 43 and her disapproval rating has gone up six points to 45. So she is underwater by two points. So things are not looking too terrible for any of these governors. Tina Kotek might be the exception now that her approval rating is actually underwater. So how about the top 10 most popular? If you know anything about politics, you know who's going to be number one. You know him, you love him. It's Phil Scott in Vermont. He's at 81% approve, 16 disapprove, and 3% of people just don't have an opinion of Scott. Then 10 points lower than that at 71% is Mark Gordon in Wyoming. Then we've got Sununu in New Hampshire, Bashir in Kentucky, and Ivy in Alabama. Rounding out the top 10. We've got Noam, and it does say South Carolina there. That is a typo. That should be South Dakota. Laura Kelly in Kansas, Brian Kemp in Georgia, Ned Lamont in Connecticut, and Josh Green in Hawaii. All of them with impressive approval ratings north of 60%. Now, what about on the flip side? Who is the least popular governor? If we switch over to that, we've got Kim Reynolds taking the top spot. She's still a net two positive at 49 to 47. So that is a precarious position for Reynolds if she's going to decide to run for re-election. Then there's Tina Kotek in Oregon, Tate Reeves in Mississippi, Jay Inslee, who's retiring in Washington, and Ron DeSantis in Florida round out the bottom five, though DeSantis is still a net seven approval. The next five are Mills in Maine, Evers in Wisconsin, Pritzker in Illinois, McKee in Rhode Island, and Hochul in New York. Some of those governors are going to be term limited, some of them might be looking to run again, and a lot of times there's other polls local to those specific states that have other data. The reason we're doing morning consult is because they show everything all at once, so that's kind of where things are at. Not a lot of surprises. We're seeing a lot of the same names we've seen in the past, and there's not as much action on the governor's side. Most of them have another two to three years before they have to face voters again. On the Senate side, we've got five Democrats that are potentially vulnerable this year. It's still way too early to tell what's going to happen, but there's your first quarter morning consult approval ratings. So let me know in the comments. Does anything stand out to you with all this data? Are you surprised to see anyone's name on the top 10 or the bottom 10? Does this affect your expectation for the election? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to help support the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.